Um, I wanted to ask you a question about um, time, um, but perhaps a good way into it is to ask about uh, memory and perception. Because you often say, including this morning, that uh, time is an illusion. It doesn't really exist. But in a sense, it seems as if memory is, in fact, necessary for uh, perception. <clears throat> and it would also seem as if memory takes place in the past. So I was wondering whether you could shed some light on the relationship between uh, memory and perception. Okay. L let's start with your statement, memory is necessary for perception. Uh, a newborn infant doesn't have any memories, but it perceives the world. In other words, you can have perception without memory. An animal perceives the world, but as far as we know, it doesn't remember. Well, that, that's not quite true, but, but animals re remember the sounds and faces. Of, so, but the point I'm trying to make is, is you can have a perception without having a memory. A memory is always a thought. You can have a perception in the absence of thought. Animals perceive, but they don't think, as far as we know. Newborn infants perceive, but they don't think. But that's not really the, the um, central point, point of your question. The, the point of your question was, if I understand you rightly, uh, doesn't memory confirm the existence of time? Is that uh, yes, I, in a sense, intellectually, I know it does not, but um, it, that seems to be the case. Yes, well, uh, uh, you're right, there seems to be. When we're watching TV, there seems to be a three-dimensional landscape, so I, I agree, there seems to be time, but we're not interested here in how things seem to be. Remember Einstein's definition of common sense, he said it's a series of uh, prejudices that most people acquire by the age of 18. So we're not interested here in common sense or how things seem to be. I agree that memory would seem to indicate the existence of time. But when we explore it further and try to find the time that memory seems to refer to, we never find it. For instance, take the memory of breakfast. That the memory, that the memory comes in the form of a thought and or an image. And that thought or image suggests that breakfast took place in something called the past. Yeah. Now, try to find that past. Memory suggests it but the memory takes place now. The memory itself, the experience of remembering, never takes place in the past to which the memory refers. So the memory suggests the past, but doesn't by itself prove it. Experience must be the test of reality. So memory suggests the past, we now try to go there. So now try to visit this place called the past. Try now to go to the past. I, I don't mean to think about the past because the thought about the past takes place in the present. An image that seems to refer to the past takes place in the present. Actually go there in your experience. Can you go there? No, I, I, I don't think I can. Uh, have you ever <laughs> been there? Sorry, I, 
I should have anticipated that. <laughs> so, sorry? I should have anticipated that. No, I, I can't go to the past. You can't go there. Has, has anyone ever been there? No one's ever been there. Not, not, not just us 85 eccentrics interested in non-duality, but if you asked any seven billion, any of the seven billion of us, have you ever actually been to this place called the past or indeed the future? Everyone would have to acknowledge sooner or later that they had never been there. So maybe what we call a past is not what we think it is. Take the um, illustration I gave of the novel. The novel is the story of a, an 80-year-old woman's life. So the story, each page is stacked up on, in parallel, on top of one another. They are all present. The entire contents of her life is, are simultaneously present now. The, the events that took place when she was five years old and the events that took place when she was 75 year old place in the novel are present at the same time. They are stacked up in parallel. They are not spread out in series. However, the mind that reads the novel cannot access the events in her life simultaneously. It can only access them page by page. That's the limitation of the mind, not the limitation of the novel. So the mind accesses the story page by page and thinks, therefore, that the story takes place in time. Time is a reflection of the limitations of the mind which reads the novel. It is not an innate quality of reality itself. So all experience takes place now, in this now, and this now is the only now there is. And isn't that your experience? Isn't it your experience that experience is always now? And how many nows have you experienced? For instance, while we've been sitting here, how many nows have you experienced? Just this one. I mean, d does the question make sense? Is it, is it 10 or 20 or thousands of nows? I mean, how many nows have taken place since we've been sitting here? Isn't it always the same now? And then extend that question to your whole life. How many nows have there been in your life? It, it's always the same now. Mm -hmm. And the now is not moving through or along a line of time because as we've already said this line of time which is, consists of a space called the past and a space called the future is never experienced the, the, the now is not a, a fragment of a moment sandwiched between these two spaces the past and the future it is this the only now there is the eternally present now and could it be that in a way the mind simply cannot understand due to its own limitations that what we call time is in fact eternity that events are stacked up in series on top of one another in the eternal now and that it is thought or the finite mind that spreads them out in time in other words that thought creates time out of eternity or, to put it another way, that when awareness looks at itself through the prism of the mind, it sees its own eternity as time. And that's not so strange. It, it sounds like a, a far-out idea, but actually when we think about it, and we notice, for instance, one, none of us have ever experienced a past or a future. Two, all experience takes place now. Three, there's only one now. All these facts, and they are facts of experience, confirm not the conventional view of time, 
but confirm what I am suggesting here. Let me give you another another analogy that, that I may have mentioned earlier this week. The, the person that uh, goes skiing and puts on a pair of orange goggles. And to begin with, everything is orange. But then he forgets that he's wearing goggles because they, they fit very comfortably. They just... He, he gets used to them. And he thinks that the orange color belongs to consensus reality. He doesn't realize that it's the lens through which he is looking. So the mind, thought and perception, is the lens through which awareness is looking at experience. In fact, it's the lens through which awareness is looking at itself. So it, it is the activity of thought and perception that make eternity look like time and infinity look like space. So if I understand you, um, both the memory and the perception are happening now? Yes. Okay. And the, the uh, example you gave earlier about the infant, the newborn infant, uh, I find it interesting so that it's been a long time since I was a newborn infant. But um, when the infant experiences these sensations, uh, whether it's you know, one day and then the following day, there's another sensation, uh, to the infant, all of these sensations are happening at the same time. W would, would you say that that's the case? Yes. It, it if, if the infant could articulate its experience and if it was yet to be conditioned by our culture and you ask the infant, when do all these sensations take place? The infant would just answer, now. And if you ask the infant, where do all your experiences take place? The infant would just answer, here. And as far as the infant was concerned, now would always be the same now, and here would always be the same here. In other words, now is not a moment in time, and here is not a place in space. I mean, isn't it that th there are so many hints of reality in the finite mind's experience? Reality leaves traces of itself everywhere. The, the fact that all experience takes place now, the fact that all experience takes place here, that, that's a that's an experience that most people don't consider significant. But it's hugely significant. That, that, that observation that it's always now and it's always here, just that observation, if you follow it, will take us to reality. It is a hint of reality in the mind. There are many other hints. The experience of love, the experience of beauty. Uh, our experience is, is littered with hints, traces of the beloved. Except we, 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 we become accustomed, our, our culture gives us a banal interpretation of them. And so we overlook these hints or traces of reality. the experience of happiness. There are so many hints. 
Our culture has just given us the wrong interpretation of all these experiences.